This conference this will now be recorded. C. So basically C with additional programming is uh, termed as C++ and with additional packages and uh, built-in programs is termed as Java. So initially he called it as O, who, uh, Patrick who invented Java, he called it O initially. So instead of Java, it was simply called O, capital O. And then uh, this was in 1991, and then renamed as Java in 1995. So since then, it was known as Java. It's 1995. So it's been 20 plus years. Okay, so the basic reasons that Java got uh, popular is or these so basic advantages of Java. So one is simple. The reason I am specifying is you should know these. Uh, I mean, just for the sake of knowledge. So it's a simple program, uh, unlike. Uh, complexity that involves in C and C++. So it basically uh, made simple simpler than C++ and its predecessors. Number two is it's secure. That's why most companies prefer to uh, get the development of their application done in Java. So it's more secure than if you compare uh, with other programming languages uh, like .NET, Microsoft .NET and other. So it's basically more secure, robust. So hence most, uh, let's say, government projects are done in, uh, and financial sector projects are done in Java. So because of the security reason, instead of more fancy, like other programming languages like .NET, it's more secure. Uh, importance, given, importance is given to security. And uh, like everybody knows, it's object-oriented. Four is architecture neutral and portable. It means any architecture can be developed using Java. And portable, it's OS independent and you can uh, work on Java on any, pretty much any OS. And multi threaded. I'll come to object oriented later. So it involves oops concept, right? Object oriented programming language. That's what we call oops. So it involves four things inheritance, encapsulation, abstraction, and polymorphism. That we will see in a minute. So multi threaded means what is multi threaded in your understanding? Multi-threaded means it can run parallel parallel uh, programming. I mean, you can work on multiple uh, um, instances of application at the same time. So multi-threading is possible. So just like you compare it to the multitasking, that can be possible in Windows. Like you can open a video and you can also talk to someone and you can listen to music at the same time. So that's what it is, multi multi-threading. So same thing is you can programming uh, the same thing using Java. So hence it is multi-threaded. And uh, it's compiled language, unlike its other languages like VB, Visual Basic, which is an interpreted language. So it's compiled. It means that you have to compile first then if there is no compilation errors, it will convert that program, your uh, English Java language to machine understandable language, which is basically dot class file. So the file we create is by programming is uh, is in terms of dot Java file. So dot Java dot Java. So whereas if you compile, it will be translated into machine language in terms of dot class file. So if you go to uh, the workspace, and look at there you will see in the bin folder you will see all the dot class files so the source folder will contain java so that's why that's where we are src means source we have created packages and classes 
So these are all Java files, they are those reside in source. So when you compile, it will create an equivalent .class file and store it in a binary, class, binary folder, which is bin. So when you execute, it will run those dot class files, not the Java files. So that 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 means if you make any changes runtime, those will not be executed. So again, you have to compile. So the Eclipse IDE, this is the Eclipse IDE, integrated development environment, pretty much takes care of it. You don't have to compile separately. When you run, it will compile and run simultaneously. So, and like we also already stated, it's robust. So it's very strong and impenetrable uh, in hacking tools. Okay, so this, these are all advantages. Can anybody, anybody state disadvantages? There are none pretty much. So unlike it's uh, just uh, uh, built on C++, that is only a disadvantage because it's not built independently. It is built on C++. So that you can say it's a disadvantage, but comparing to advantages, it's Okay, so let's come to the OOPS concept. So OOPS concept, like I said, what are those steps in the OOPS concept? Contents, classes and objects. Encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, and inheritance. So we have already known that any Java programming con is uh, uh, consisting of classes and objects. That's what it is, right? So these are classes. These are all objects. So when you create a variable. It will pay pretty much create a physical space in the Java virtual machine JVM, which is an object. So it's a combination of class and objects. Now, what is encapsulation? Encapsulation, I will just briefly explain. So we don't need to go into the theory. We are basically jumping into the practical aspect of code Java, which is required for automation. So encapsulation means you don't want to reveal uh, the uh, code to the end user so it's like think of a capsule so the uh, medicine is inside the capsule so you, nobody knows what's inside you just pop it so encapsulation means class and objects are wrapped up wrapped up like a capsule so it is called encapsulation so basically it's for security uh, abstraction we will know which is not required for automation however. so polymorphism is uh, basically for Overloading. So any given method can be used in multi forms. So I have already showed you example, which I will show you again today. So it's basically so overloading. Uh, you can take uh, create a method like add, and you can pretty much change its signature, but keep the same name. And uh, according to the number of uh the uh, parameters you pass while calling it will automatically call that so that is pretty much all part so inheritance is you create some functions in parent object create some variables in parent parent class and you create some child class child class extends parent class so when child class extend parent class child class will automatically inherit the features of parent class so that you don't have to create those variables and methods all over again in the child class or classes that are extending parent class so that basically to save some energy and space and everything so inheritance is a uh, one of the good features provided by java okay so now we will uh, we have already seen this so i'll pretty much uh, just go through them quickly there are important aspects, aspects called access specifiers or modifiers. What are, what are these? Can anyone explain? Specifiers or modifiers, you can say. I already explained, right? 
one is public private protected second one is uh, static and non static so non static means it's if you don't uh, declare a variable or method as non static uh, don't use static it's automatically non static and third one is final okay so what is public modifier public means it can be accessed anywhere right so that's why it is public so mostly if you want any classes to be used uh, in uh, that function or uh, that class and any other class that is inside the project you want to declare or you want to use a public modifier so for methods as well as the classes uh, i mean uh, variables like this so this is a public so that means it can be used in, and it is a public class so i can pretty much use this new class new class and instantiate it and use its method if any this doesn't have any methods right now so the good example will be uh, addition subtraction multiplication division example i showed you all the day so and uh, private is pretty much the name suggests private if i want to keep this private uh, method if it has any methods like private void my function like this this cannot be accessed anywhere except this class so i am not defining anything just a dummy function so protected is uh, uh, we don't go for protected automation so normally it is used by developer so with some condition with some uh, protected uh, is between public and private you can access provided some conditions are satisfied okay so what is static static it allocates the memory before the object is specified so basically if i already showed you example so public if this is public static void or variable so before uh, this uh, uh, even at the runtime before it's called the memory automatically allocates the uh, is allocated for this so that you can directly access these static variables or methods using the class name so that is the main reason uh, and uh, final is okay final is like constant so if you make any variable final throughout the class you cannot change its value that means it cannot be uh, it cannot be uh, modified uh, in terms of value so if you want to declare any value any variable and assign a value to it and don't want to change or don't want it to be changed then use our final so we will see this example later and we have already seen data types what are the data types we have seen many data types right like primitive data types reference data types and everything so i'll just specify those data types quickly so that you will recall uh, what are those data types integers okay so there are different types of integers byte short int long right so when i specify long it has uh, you can pro provide more bytes it basically consists of uh, uh, i don't exactly remember if you are going for a long number without a decimal declare it as a long if you are going for a short number without a decimal declare it as an int so we will see the practical aspects of these data. Mm, you already know the floating points what are the floating points you can see that deals with the decimal whichever is decimal so you declare them as float or double so if it's like 2.3 you want to declare it as float it is 23.5 or double so and what else character the keyword is char so this deals with one letter at a time so if you are uh, only using like a if i want to deal with a only you just uh, declare it as char like public care and assign variable a bc so 
If it is a string, you go for string. String is a class, not a data type, so I'm not mentioning it here. So string, uh, whatever, uh, this is a string that it can quotes is a string. So that you can use as a string with a capital letter. Since it's a class, it doesn't come under data type, so I'm not mentioning it here. Another important data type is Boolean. Boolean, everybody knows it has only two values. What are those? Can anybody specify? Uh, four. No. True or false? True or false, yeah, correct. True or false. Okay, so anybody, uh, if you want to know a little bit about byte, it basically it's capacity. Every data type has its capacity, right? Based on which you can allocate some data uh, value. So if you go beyond that value, it's going to throw some exception. Whatever exception, it cannot contain that value or wrong data type or whatever. So basically, if you want to use byte, if the capacity you want to allocate only eight bits. So the range would be, I'll just uh, it like this so that we can go eight bits and its range is, range is minus 128 to plus 128, negative to positive, minus 128 to plus 128. So beyond this range, you uh, declare a byte type of variable and assign a value beyond this range, it's going to throw exception error or whatever. So default value for this is if you don't assign a value, the default value is always for a byte is zero. You know, so I'll just quickly show you. So byte A, so this if I don't assign a value, it's a zero. That means by default, it is zero like this. You can also assign one, two, three, right? So when I assign 222, it's showing error. Why? Because it's basically beyond the range 128 minus 128 to plus 128, right? right? So hence it's a error. So minus 128 is not a problem. Minus 129 is a problem. So see, so you don't want to go beyond the range. So you should know exactly what is the capacity of each variable. So hence I'm just mentioning it here. So byte, all right, its capacity is eight bits. That's it, key is eight bits. Its range is minus 128 to plus 128, literally. Minus 128, minus 127, 126, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 128. All these values come. You can assign to byte type of variable. Default value is 0. That means you don't assign any value. Like here, I assigned a value. So it's not 0. If we don't assign a value, its value is 0. Now, short. Short type of variable's capacity is. 16 bits, double, double the byte. And uh, can anybody guess the range of it? 128 times 2. No, uh, it's not double. The range is bigger than this. So it's basically minus 32,768 to plus. Oh, sorry actually uh, the zero is counted so here 127 only so if you assign 128 plus 128 to a byte it's going to throw error so minus 128 to plus 127 because zero is also included in between. so likewise can you guess what is its plus side range how far it can go on the positive side of the scale 32,000 uh -huh. 32,767. Correct. And uh, its default value, if I don't assign a value, its value is taken as zero. So here, just keep in mind that we are talking about integers. So these are all subtypes of integers. Integer 
all right so integer means you all know math it's a number without a decimal so that's all you have to know <laughs> don't worry about the complexity of its nature okay so basically we are not going to use byte and short but it is good to know that's why i'm mentioning mainly we are going to use int or long so int is the main integer whenever you want to declare an integer you basically use int that is the main thing so however we are just want to see all okay so int what's its capacity basically doubles every time so doubles than its predecessor so it's 32 bits now what's it range range is actually bigger don't worry about it it's actually 2 billion minus and plus side so 2 billion to 2 billion so that don't worry about the number so we are not going to the theoretical aspect of it so i'll just mention minus 2 billion everybody knows what billion is right billion contains nine zeros after two one one billion means one followed by nine zeros. one million means one followed by six zeros billion means nine zeros trillion means 12 zeros blah 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 it goes on okay so don't worry about that the change 2 billion change uh, just need to know the rough calculation since we are not uh, going to be hardcore core java developers right so plus 2 bill i'll just use bill and what is the default value integer no no price for guessing zero 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 so that means i'll just make an example quickly so that you don't uh, get lost in theory so short let's say b equals so tell me some number you can go for it right no it's basically beyond range yeah so short is always this range minus 30 2000 so i just made it bigger. okay then int c so if it is left like this, C has zero. That means if I print C, system mode dot print ln C, it's gonna print what? Zero. So that's a default value. So for C, I can pretty much allocate any bigger number. So this, okay, this is actually beyond two billion. So just keep an eye on it. All right. So this is a uh, acceptable integer. So if you want to go beyond that, always go for long. So we, we still have one more bigger. So the number I provided, this number, if you want to assign you are dealing with this kind of big number, you better declare it as a long type. So that we're going to see. OK, now you should have one question. OK, why don't we always go for long? because it long can't long already contains byte short and it can anybody explain why it's a simple simple answer so why you have to deal i mean why should i declare a variable as byte if i'm dealing with minus 128 plus 128 why not long or int because int if i declare int x equals 12 this is also acceptable right X. Okay, so don't worry about this x because when I declare two variables of the same name, it's going to throw duplicate local variable. So let's call it x1. Okay, so the answer is simple. Can anybody guess quickly? I mean, it's in hardcore programming, it is required, but for not, not for automation. But just good to know from the interview perspective. Yes, anyone? because it's gonna occupy a lot of uh, memory in the physical space hard drive that's what it is right if you if your uh, movie file is like 2 gb uh, then it's gonna occupy more so same file movie file can be like 1 gb so it's the same example so in jvm it's gonna create memory allocations for each variable when you declare and when you run and when you use so automatically integer takes more capacity 32 bits so 8 bits is shorter than 32 bits right in terms of memory bit bit what is a bit byte bit is a physical physical bit right minus 1 uh, 0 1 these are bits remember computer programming is 
uh, is written in only two numbers, zero and one, on or off, switch on, switch off, light, dark, only two. So that's a binary language. So it's going to occupy eight bits. A byte contains eight bits, correct, byte. So you always measure files uh, capacity in terms of bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, uh, what else, gigabytes, petabytes, blah, blah. So eight bits, eight bits means eight switch on, off, on, off, off off on off like eight combinations of it whatever combinations again this is this will be decoded in the uh, machine language so deep down so we are not going to deal with that kind of level so we are just going to stay at this english level so you know now the uh, uh, meaning of this is the um, if you declare a variable as higher type it's going to occupy more space just you have to keep that in mind only you are going to declare a lot of variables like thousands of variables like for example you take google programming that has to uh, uh, worry about this but for automation we don't have to we can pretty much just go for int even if i want to assign a value 12 so that's no problem so this is just for the understanding works only okay how about long long's capacity is anyone you can see the pattern right So range is okay so don't worry about the range it's minus nine followed by how many zeros 18 zeros i don't know exactly the name of it nine followed by zeros and the other side same thing plus nine So I can call it like nine billion billion. So that's why. Okay, let's call that bill bill. Nine billion billion. Same thing on the other side. Why? Because billion contains nine zeros and 18 zeros which is a billion billion there is a name but don't worry about this okay long what is the example for long so if i am dealing with long number like this i can pretty much declare it as long so this what is the mistake here equal sign and the literal is out of range still this is out of range so let's decrease this Okay, don't worry about the range. Uh, okay. okay, anyway, so the default value is zero. Let's change it. Uh, okay, floating points. What are the floating points? Float and double. Okay, so I'm not going to discuss capacity and range because it's too theoretical. So I'm just going to show you an example of it. So majorly we are going to use double, right? Double D equals so 121 point something. So that can be declared as double. Okay, what about uh, the character? Isn't there a letter? Right, okay, uh, yeah, later it's actually not responding. Let's see this. Yeah, okay, yeah, so I'm gonna go directly to so cat c, uh, c is already there, so c1 equals okay, so that is the example of cat. Okay, now if I, you can ask me uh, how do we declare a string variable? So it's the same pool. 
it's not a variable it's not a data type it's a class name so n starts with a capital letter so this can be instantiated string x is equal to a new string so that will call its constructor anything however i can just go for string s equals double quotes this is a automation class like this so you can put uh, pretty much everything inside the double quotes including alpha numeric special cares so it's so you can say it's a combination of cares you can call it if you want okay what else boolean boolean okay uh, what is the default value of boolean True, false. Yeah, false. False. Oh, no, no, false. By default, it's false. So only if you assign true, it will be true. So by default, if you don't specify anything, it is false. So if I mention false, it is false anyway. You don't have to. So but it's by default, it is false. And if you if I want to change its value to true through the program anywhere within this class or within the project. I can pretty much make it really true. So it will be changed here. I just change it from false to true. So if I don't mention it here, its initial line value will always be false. Just here to remember that. Okay. So let's not go to the uh, ranges and capacity because it's going to take a lot of time. Okay. So these are the basics of this. Okay, now like I mentioned, I'll just go about the oops concept because uh, we have to switch to uh, the selenium. This is just for understanding selenium, right? So I'll just go for this. Uh, where is the oops concept? Yeah, classes and objects. There is no need for explaining because we already using uh, are using class and objects. These are all classes, and whatever you declare inside the class are objects. So these are objects in the sense that they are going to occupy some physical space object is going to occupy some physical space in the physical world likewise a java object is going to occupy some virtual space in the java virtual machine so in the word object so classes and objects are the integral part of java so that which is a first and foremost concept in the oops object oriented programming language Okay, encapsulation. Anyway, class and objects will take care of it. So let's not discuss about these. It's, uh, let's go to inheritance. So inheritance deals with, like I said, parent and child relationship, parent and children, right? So I already created a parent class here. Let's see the example and I'll explain. I'll make you write one uh, program in terms of homework. Don't worry. So in this parent class, right, I declared a variable of type integer and then I send a value 10 and I declared and defined a method called add. Simple example, don't worry. A variable and a method, right? Method has some sysout, out, system dot out dot print parent class add, whatever. Okay, and I declared one more method and defined it too. So it's called sub parent class sub and uh, again system of dot print and goodbye okay now i want to uh, i will create many classes in my projects okay so let's say there are some child classes okay so let's think about this parent class as a base class in which i have created a lot of methods and variables which i am going to use this in my subclasses child classes later on so what i have to do i simply have to extend my parent class so i created another child class this extends parent class so that is the keyword this is like any other child class all right now why i am doing this i want to use the features of the parent class parent class is the name namesake i put the name as parent class to understand it better you can pretty much call it anyway anything you want so in order to inherit those features that are mentioned in the parent class i have to extend it the keyword is extends 
and extends what parent class okay so parent class in the library automatically it shows control space will automatically pop up the options for me so i can that's it okay so now there is an important we are talking about the inheritance so pay attention now i have declared another method and defined it called multiplication mul okay so don't worry about multiplication i am not actually operating into uh, multiplication between two uh, numbers simple function multiplication and i just sys out something child class multiply and division 2 now i want to use the addition function that is already defined in the parent class correct so parent class has already a method defined in it which is called what addition right in the child class since i extended the parent class i don't have to redefine it because i am extending the parent class however if i want to do some modifications to it then i can do it okay so in the parent class the additions is public void add and blah 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 so this is my definition so in the child class public void add i just changed its definition sys out the blah 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 is changed whatever the blah blah can be and this is a simple example changed well let's call it okay now in order to execute anything i should have the public static void main function in the class okay so parent class i did not put any psvm public static void main because i am not directly executing the parent class because i am going to execute the child class which will in turn extend the parent class so i have to have public static void main string arc so don't worry about its meaning so public means it's public accessible uh, anyway static means it's only gonna uh, static static variables can be used in this so we are going to discuss about the static now static non static later and void means its data return type is void that means it's not going to return anything like uh, we have seen the functions types right the functions return something accept something doesn't return accept uh, uh, parameters doesn't accept parameters but return do not accept and do not return anything so four types so this is one of those types so which does not return anything but it takes string array types of argument so this is only for run time if i want to pass any string like uh, the other day i shown you run as configurations we can pass this argument so don't worry about this run configurations because it's not going to be useful in automation so if you want to run with the configuration setting you have to pass these arguments here like if i if i am passing anything at all like strings like first name last name think about those so this basically is a blocker to automation because automation has to be devoid of manual effort so you, every time you run a class every time you run a test case automated test case you have to be, pa be passing these arguments which is basically part automation part manual thing so we are going to avoid this so don't worry about this so if you want to pass anything you have to pass like, like for example i want to pass uh, in realistically uh, environment name during execution let's say dev1 so i can pass this which will be but this can be avoided too so this can be put in a property file and called from the later so let's not use run configurations so that is a pretty much pretty much that is the meaning of this public static void main so why we have to use this because we want to execute something so if you have any executable code in a class you always put that or call those inside this main function okay now i am going to instantiate the classes here okay so i have instantiated child class no i already told you how to instantiate class name object name equals new keyword and its constructor constructor is basically uh, the same name as class name it matches it should match so the constructor means like class name followed by two parentheses 
so i have i am going to instantiate parent class as well so let's call it parent class object 2 is equal to new child class so the meaning of this first one is access all methods when i instantiate child class the object can access all methods okay including the parent and child because child already extended parents remember so it will automatically inherit the features in the parent class now parent class object to equals new child class this will access only the parent class methods or variables only remember so parent class object to new child class so the object to obj2 can only access the parent class methods not the child class because i mentioned uh, parent class here okay so this we are gonna uh, use example in selenium when we start okay so can we do this child class object tree new parent class this we cannot do because children cannot hold parent the other way other way around is true parent can hold children right children cannot hold parent so hence you cannot instantiate like this child class object is called new parent class this this is correct way however this is going to only access the parent class methods and objects variables fields okay and parent class object for is called new parent class this will only access parent class methods right okay now using object like i said child object child class object to new child class this accesses all methods no limitation so object using obj i can access addition subtraction which belong to parent class addition subtraction and multiplication and division which belong to child class mul and div okay now object 2 using object 2 i can only access parent class methods that are add or add and sub okay so now what happens okay object 2 using object 2 i try to access mul so it is going to throw error what is the error the method mul is undefined for the type parent class so that you cannot do if you want to access all the variables and methods then always use this signature for instantiation child class object new child class because you automatically inherit parents features as well as the child itself uh, its feature itself because child features are already there in the child class right okay so this is not correct so i am just putting this example is not correct and pointing out so that go to the compilation error okay object 3 instantiation is totally wrong you cannot even do this because if you did it will throw the error so the red underline is actually error and you can also see it here and click on here it will take you to there so this basically shows type mismatch cannot convert from parent class to child it's a kind of type uh, uh, data type mismatch conversion mismatch type casting mismatch you can say but not related to uh, data types it's related to the classes and the child class parent class okay so using object 4 what can i access only the parent class again so addition here subtraction so using object 4 can i do can i access add yes i can okay because it's acceptable using object 4 can i access child children like children methods are division see even if i type it's not auto completing so that means it's not available so even if you type manually it's going to throw this error the method div is undefined for the type parent class why because parent child cannot uh, hold parent i mean the this these are not accessible children's methods are not accessible by the parent however the parents methods are accessible by the children so it's other way around children so just remember one thing 
children inherits the features of parent but parent do not parents do not inherit the features of children so you understand this right then you will understand this okay so okay don't worry about this this is related to selenium automation i just uh, showed you prematurely so uh, this still you can understand web driver is a class right web driver is a class and i am instantiating the web driver for the chrome driver right so the chrome driver is a part of web driver so there are uh, many types of browser based drivers chrome driver uh, uh firefox driver so uh, web driver is basically it's it's a interface so it was just created and left so that the browser base like google took it and it implemented those uh, that are defined or declared but not defined in the web driver for its own browser base so it's always browser dependent so when you want to run your automation capture exports and operate on the objects use on the chrome driver you have to use this new chrome driver web driver driver is called new chrome driver so i'll just i'm comment and show you probably it's going to throw error because i did not uh, put these drivers or imported these packages see okay so this is just to show you example prematurely so this is what we are going to do so using driver we can access all its methods that are defined in the chrome driver chrome driver class right so do not worry if you don't understand uh, explicitly just try and understand that this is how we we are going to instantiate web driver for the new chrome driver and try to access uh, operate on the applications web applications objects within the chrome browser so okay so let's run this and see so basically there are not, no errors so it's gonna sys out the main reason i put sys out is you can physically see uh, in the console what is going on. so okay there is an error let's find out what it is okay so this we have taken as example for uh, not possible thing so this is not correct so whatever is not correct just comment out so commenting just for my reading purposes you can delete it later but i just want to keep it for non executable reading so let me run this which one i need to run parent class or child class uh child class uh, no, no no which class parent class or child class child class is extending parent class that means it is inheriting parent class features like its methods now which class i have to run child or parent child class child class, child class. that's main reason is child class as a public static quiet main and this is what i'm gonna uh, i am interested in running because child class is inheriting features of parent class as well as its own methods that means it can always access the methods defined in its own class children class so that is you already know it so in addition to that we have uh, just learned the inheritance feature inheriting the parent class so this is the simplest example of it now i am gonna run the child class okay so do not worry uh, if you see any errors, errors exist in required projects. So let's see. You can always see the errors here. So the error doesn't belong to our package, our class, but the errors exist. So it just warned. So let's go and rectify these errors in the new class. I just modified something, right? Okay. So change the value. So where did this is coming from? Child class add okay now uh, i have to explain one more feature of this uh, inheritance which is called overriding do not do not confuse with overloading overloading and overriding both are different things overloading comes under polymorphism overriding comes under inheritance okay let me make a note of it quickly so that uh, we will see a lot of examples related to this so over loading comes under 
polymorphism. Okay, I will just define it as quickly. It's a uh, using uh, like uh, what can I call it? Like there are many definitions, but just I'm coming with quick example, quick definition. Overloading is like uh, creating many forms of same method by changing its signature. Okay, so addition, addition, I change its uh, addition integer a integer b i'll change it to in uh, addition integer a integer b integer c uh, a b c d d whatever i'll return something i don't return all these command are the overloaded methods of same addition function so just need to just need to understand this. whereas overriding is concept that belongs to which one inheritance okay so basically this means that child method of uh, child method takes precedence or it overrides precedence over the parents method provided both methods are same okay so the you will know the uh, you will understand this by means of this example okay in the beginning i told you right the parent class and child class as a common method addition add okay so this add this definition okay parent class add is different from this add just remember the signature is not changed only the definition is changed definition is what you put inside it i can put whatever i want to write like integer x equals 10 I mean, it's just purely your requirement based, whatever your automation needs it. Okay. This out. Yeah. X. Okay. I told the reason is I change, I could change its definition in the child class. Now, what happens when I access this ad? Okay. So using object ad, is it going to access the parent ad or child ad? Ch child ad because child add child function overrides it takes precedence over parents method that's what it is overriding about so child if i take the same name of method from the parent and redefine it and if i call that function it's going to call child's function or the parent function because you may you may get confusion like this ad belongs to both parent and class parent and child however since object this child class object is new child class can access all methods including parent and there is a confusion like this ad should belong to parent or child to avoid that okay so overriding concept all automatically takes care of it it's going to always refer to the child law so hence you see the changed value okay let me rerun because i change its definition again just now Okay, don't worry about this. We are going to rectify. Okay, so change value 10. Where is it? Here, overriding method. So change value 10, x equal 10, that is printed. So if you want, you can also put a, a break, line break, just to differentiate between uh, functions. Okay, so that is overriding. So just to make you understand i'll just put this here also okay so if what what happens if the this thing goes to the next line it's going to throw error because it has to be in the same line otherwise the comment has to have multiple i mean multi-line comment so you have to put multi-line comment like this or double slash here or pretty much okay, this control shift backslash will multi-line multi-line comment so this is also okay. okay anyway this is not required so i'm just going to go like this okay so there is a typo here precedence Okay. 
okay now you understand right the core writing so if i change method uh, take the parents method and uh, change its definition in child method and if i want to access it i can all i can only access it's a, a child's counterpart not the parents counterpart okay then sub sub uh, is parent class sub remember that's why i written parent class sub because i did not override the sub so obviously the object object is referring to the sub so the best way to do this is just control and click let's see where it where it takes you to so it takes it took me to parent class that means it is accessing parents class now same thing i can do for overridden uh, pay, uh, function so if i click add where it's going to take me to parent or keep me in the children child itself i just told you parent class no because this is a overridden function right it's going to keep me in the child class itself see i did not switch to parent child that is the main concept of overriding so do not forget this if this add function were not overridden then it would take me to the parent see now it took me the parent since i have taken the same function and changed its definition in the child class that means basically i overrid i have overridden it it's this is going to take precedence this is going to be priority for this object so you have to understand okay so hence parent class sub right now multiplication what is a multiplication multiplication definition is child class multiplication okay so the parent class sub goodbye so the goodbye i told you because it goes there and says goodbye to parent it comes back to children that's the reason i put goodbye so let's take you to the sub right subtraction so parent class sub and goodbye this is printed here okay are you looking yeah, at the word any so i'm yeah, go ahead. so i'm are you looking at the console the result what are we looking at right now like you're looking at the bottom parent class equals uh -huh. sub by what is that then what is the result from that which one you're talking about the the highlighted one you see the result that's on the bottom console so where is that result coming from? Is it from the child class when you run that uh, class? Or? That is what I'm explaining. Okay, listen. Okay, the main problem is I did not put a uh, line break. Okay, in the public static void main, these are all instantiations, right? Okay, so the instantiations, instantiations part is over. This instantiation deals with all kinds of instantiation. What object can access what methods, parent or child, both or only parent. Now, actual execution part starts here. Now, I want using arch, I am accessing add. Okay. Now, since add is overridden child, it's going to access only child. That is the overriding concept. Okay. When I execute this, it's going to print this changed value, changed value x equal to 10 is so x 10 add oh. is over add is executed okay clear yes okay okay now add is over no sub i have a question okay. yeah good um so basically if we're overriding the i mean if we're overriding add in the child child class any new mm -hmm. child class is created will access the child class or the parent class the add is overridden right now yes. using this object instance if i call upon add which is gonna call the parents add or child add child, the child, child add because, yes yeah that is easy as as is it sounds because child's method it's always gonna take precedence over parents method that is what is overriding all about do not, I mean, think or overthink or something. That's where it ends. No, no, I'm saying like if there's a new child class, for example. So new child it, class. Okay. We're going to yes, come to that later. The, no, no. Okay. Multi child classes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You complete your question. Yeah, it's just um in the new child class, if we're accessing the object uh, add, will it access from the child or will it access from the parent class? Okay. You tell me what what is going to access it. Um, I'm thinking since it's overridden already, it will access from the child class. Okay, now we are talking about another child class. 
right which is called child class 2 yeah you are saying same child class or different child class oh different child class yes yes okay that's what i'm calling child class 2 let's say child class 2 extends parent class again okay mm. correct yes now that child class 2 is different from this child class 1 or just child class just remember that it's yes, not okay, okay. It's sibling okay child class one is sibling of child class two just just like brothers child class two will not inherit any features from child class one or just child class okay because okay. child class two i'm extending parent class so it will directly ex uh, inherit features from parent class okay so it's simple two brothers they don't uh, have anything in common i mean they don't inherit features uh, among themselves they inherit right. features from the parent okay same same example so okay. let's say this is child class 2 okay and i have let's say i have uh, overridden i have extended the parent class and this time parent class uh, sub subtraction method i took it and i have changed its definition okay that's what is called overriding okay now in okay. the child class 2 okay that let's say it's object 2 dot sub when i do this it's going to access sub of that child class 2, not the parent class, not the child class 1 either. Because even okay. though it, there is a method called sub, if I have already in here in the child, let's say, let's take the example of addition in itself. Okay. So this add will be there in child class 2 also. So if I call this add from child class 2, it's going to only refer to child class 2 only, nothing to do with child class 1. So it's always, always between child and parent not siblings so if you are clear about that it's uh yes yes clear? thank you so much yeah yes yeah sure okay thank you now object multiplication multiplication what is going to access there is no multiplication in the parent class obviously it's going to access the child class itself so we are then in child class so here we are multi child class multi that is printed right now next is div okay div again same thing i have not or uh, there is no such function as div in the parent class so child class div is printed here okay now couple more examples with another objects we have taken first instance okay now we have uh, we will see the examples of object 2 which is lightly different see parent class object 2 object 2 because i cannot use the same name so hence the different name new child class this kind of instantiation will only enable you to access parent class methods only not child class okay now let's see good and uh, both positive and negative examples obj2 dot add okay so just pay attention now i have tried to do obj dot add which basically access the parent class uh, oh, sorry child class okay child class okay obj2 is taking me to child class only it's not going to parent class now tell me the answer here using object two dot add where it's going to take me which add it's going to access parent or child tell parent, me the answer parent. Tell you. parent okay why parent right right answer but why parent because it only parent class. correct access only parent class using this parent class object to new child class this kind of instantiation will enable this, enable this object to access only parent class not child class so the, this example is i took it intentionally to in, uh, make you understand the difference between this overriding with this kind of instantiation two things coming at the same time now add is in uh, defined in child and parent class and child class is extending parent class hence this is called overridden function okay this add is called overridden function that's what we call it now when i normally access with this object it would always access child because it will always take a uh, point to the child however if i take the object two and access the ob uh, this child class add function which is overridden is invisible it's pretty much invisible to this okay so it's always going to access a parent one only for the simple reason that the 
obj2 is a instance of parent class not the child class okay so parent class obj2 just remember this it's a instance of parent class hence it's going to stick to parent class only child class obj just remember that it's instance of child class so it's going to access child class methods and the child class is extending parent class hence it's going to access parent class methods also so this is best of both worlds and uh, combining that with overriding concept it's going to take it's going to give preference to the child class method if a method name matches uh, with the parent class method so that you have to remember okay now object to add always refers to the parent class because this reason okay now that is here uh, sorry uh, here let's uh, just jump to that one parent class add parent class add where is the parent class yeah yeah sorry parent class add is where okay object two dot add right so which one is it is accessing parent class add Oh, okay hold on let's make a separation because uh, without separators we are getting confused okay so parent class uh, due right so this due i'll just uh, object okay so let's just move so okay okay now object two and uh, for object after object 2 i'll put a separator and after object 4 i'll put a separator and these are the wrong examples whatever i commented because not correct okay now let's rerun this okay error okay so now this is clear so first one is ended here now let's see clearly object to access okay yeah there is a mistake actually okay can anybody point out yeah anyone anyone can point out that mistake okay so the mistake is this access only child class otherwise there is no difference between second and fourth one right so parent class object to child class access only child class methods parent class object for new parent class will access only parent class methods okay so that is a mistake okay now coming to this object two can only access child class methods so that is the reason why when i say obj2 dot add it's accessing child class methods only arch2 dot add I still see the difference here. So this is taking me to parent class, but it doesn't print parent class here. It prints child class. Okay, let's come back to that later. I think something is wrong. Okay, now object two dot multi. Okay, so this multiplication obviously is defined in which class child class so yeah mal and uh, object 4 dot sub okay so this is the string 
object four dot stub always referring to the parent class only. So parent class sub goodbye. Parent class sub goodbye. Okay, I think there is a confusion. So just uh, deal with these separators. And uh, here div four division four is obviously defined in child class. So child class division is this one. Child class div. It is not printing. Or is it going out of? Okay, so let's do one at a time. Hmm. Obj okay. Obj so this is commented out. Obj two dot add is referring to. Parent class dot add. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it is basically overriding concept takes over it. Okay. So it, it don't worry about control control click. Control click, click always take you to the uh, this parent class. So it's always gonna be overridden object only. So overriding is pretty much tells you that. If a child class method uh, uses same method name as parent class and it redefines it, uh, it's uh, if I call this that method, it's going to always refer to the child class method only. Okay, we will see these examples uh, real time in the automation. So it just you have to understand that uh, instantiation deals. Uh, sorry, inheritance deals with uh, parent class methods will be inherited uh, to child class. And overload overriding uh, pretty much makes child method uh, taking precedence over the parents method. Okay. So that's uh, child class parent class. Okay, so next to move to the uh, overloading. Overloading, uh, I told you the example. Polymorphism, I think this should be. Yeah. So overload basically comes in the um, uh, polymorphism polymorphism means it's many forms so a function can uh, uh, occur in many forms so that's what it's meaning so in this case in this class called poly I define add a one time two time and three time so this add takes two integers as parameters and returns an integer okay the signature is changed okay it doesn't uh, I mean you can pretty much keep the same definition or change definition but signature changes so based on the signature you can call it that's how we differentiate by calling what parameters you pass and uh, blah 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 so here add function I just added another parameter called integer C so this is uh, basically means I changed signature so don't worry about the definition. You can put anything, keep the same thing or uh, different. Now, if you see here, add, I pass first parameter as double and second parameter as integer, okay? So that means I change its signature, okay? And it, its written type is integer and it I made it static and everything. Okay, so now let's try to call this in a separate class. Let's call this class, okay? First, let's resolve this test issue. What is this? I think there might there is a typographical error. Yeah, so you can see right here. So here probably it's extra. Yeah, so that is extra. Okay, so now I created this library poly. Uh, I created three different methods. Uh, which are overloaded same method name different signature. That's what it means. Uh, that's what is meant by overloading So I'll create another class in test package and call those and see how do you call what? So it, let's... it doesn't matter if you put void or not uh, oh, One second I'm coming to that. Okay, let me create this 
uh, name so let's call this poly test okay so that you can easily uh, remember poly test is calling poly uh, poly function poly hybrid and i am going to include psvm in this because i am going to execute okay poly test okay now i want to access the methods in the poly three methods and how i am going to call how uh, the way i'm going to call will tell uh, pretty much what is going to access uh, okay so how do i call the methods that are, are defined in poly first yeah uh, can you tell me who has spoke just before and your question I forgot what I was saying. I was saying that uh, there you were overriding. No, sorry, not overloading two of the oh. same, same. Um, I guess what do you call that? Same method, right? One of the, but the, no. one of them is overloaded. So here, add method is said to be overloaded. Okay, don't worry about. It. I'll explain this again. So basically, we are overloading the method add by changing its signature okay now okay i just want to use these methods uh, belonging to poly class in my test poly test how can i do that i already gave you example right how do you call the methods by instantiating so basically i have to instantiate the poly class that is the only way unless it is a static so we have already created one static method so i'll show you how to do that without instantiating so let's call poly p equals new poly so this is the instantiation right yeah now you have to import it because the poly class belongs to the separate uh, package library and my test is in separate package called test so if you're dealing with different packages you should import it so don't worry you just hover over it and it will show you the suggestion go for the first session mostly so if it imports poly it, it's going to add this import statement remember that's what i told you in the beginning First and foremost is the package declaration, then import statement. So this is the second one. So basically, I am using the poly class belonging to a separate package called library. Hence, I have to import it. I can write it manually or don't worry. Even if you just put uh, go for the session, it will automatically import it for you. OK, so now p dot add will show how many, all the three. Right, these are all overloaded functions. Add with int int with int 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 and double int. Okay. Now, how do you know which I can access? So that you can only know by by passing the parameter types. So uh, having said that, if I pass two integers, it's going to access the first method. If I pass three integers, it's going to access second method. If I pass one double one int, it's going to access third method. Simple as it. Okay. So now let me pass one comma two. Okay. Now which it is going to access? First method. It went to the first method. Right. Call two arguments. So that's why I put sys out call three arguments. Call two arguments. Next. We just differentiate. I put. Now let me run it quickly. Okay, we'll run one by one, otherwise we'll get confused. Okay, call three are two arguments and value is three. It's addition, whatever it is. So here, call two arguments and value is one plus two, whatever you pass C. Okay, now I want to access the other other method so how can i access the other method p dot add simply by passing or selecting you can also do that so it will show the these placeholders a b c so that you know exactly what to pass it shows okay it's basically asking me to enter a value of type integer okay now let me enter 12 10 
take a tab, it's going to switch to the next uh, parameter or argument. So now whatever is in bold is expecting. So put next number 14. Now take a tab. It's going to jump to the next one. Okay. Now automatically by passing the number of arguments, I can determine what function to what overloaded function to access. So that is as simple as it. Now if I run, always save before run. So you can run here because last turn will be automatically there in the history. So call three arguments and it's addition. So exactly it called that function with three arguments called three arguments. This is just to indicate we are accessing the right function or not. Okay, now I want to access third function. Okay, add which is different from first two. What is the difference? It is a static function. These two are non static. There is no keyword static here. Public is a public access modifier, in is a written type. However, okay, this is a void return type. Okay, it doesn't have anything. So, void is it. If I actually assign this value to entry, it's going to work first one. So, let's do that. So, I can pretty much create int added number. Let's say I can assign it. Okay, because this add has a return type, this one, int. So, I can do it. And I can pretty much use this throughout my program in whichever way I want to do. So here I cannot do this. If I do this, it's going to throw error because it doesn't have written type. Okay. So if I hover over this red line, it, say the, it will say the error. Type mismatch cannot convert from wide to int. So that means that this uh, written type of this function is wide and you're trying to use it as if it has int. So, so that's a mistake. Okay. Now let's access the third method in a different way because it's a static method okay now i will tell you how to access the static methods so static method doesn't need to have a object instance instanced object of this class so i can directly access it using the class name so poly is a class name right poly dot see as in when i type poly dot only one method is available not the other two because other two are non-static this is the only static yeah and it's directly accessing the first uh, third one and it says the signature is i mean you cannot differentiate signature because the first method signature is also same two arguments second me third method is uh, also having two however the data type differs first parameter in the third method is double so 0.0 and second time is int okay and uh, let's see so let's see double int so double uh, just to differentiate i put double because i can uh, pass a uh, floating point number decimal point so that you can easily tell and it has return type 2 so return type has been given so i can pretty much use my value my way of is equal to so it will be whatever the value uh, is going to come out of this it's going to be assigned so what is the uh, advantage of this my way because i can use it so just for the time being i'm going to see how this my variable value yeah. is I'm my turning the line int my variable equals poly what is that like uh, which one? The line you just put earlier than the system dot up this, in my ver. This this line. How did, how did you come? What is that line for? That's okay, so the add add function is a third add function. It has a return type int. That means that I can return this value to an integer. That's what I did in the first function also, right? You here. This first function add also has a return type int. That means I can return it. It returns. Remember. Return C. So understand this. I am accepting two integers and adding them and putting them in another integer and returning that addition. 
got it same thing here i am accepting double end int adding them and because if i add double end int the result is going to be double always because the higher uh, higher data type is double and i am returning the double uh, returning the uh, sorry yeah i have to put this double okay returning the double because uh, oh i am returning b right okay i am just changing the example correctly that was the wrong example i mean that right example but this is the correct example in order for you to understand okay here i am adding double end int okay now i am uh, if i add double end int 1.2 plus 2 is going to be 3.2 which is a double so basically that that's what i have to return i basically return b not addition which is another number which is also good example but this is a perfect example okay now double int double is being returned i can pretty much say void and do not return anything that is perfectly fine too and what it's going to do it's not going to return anything it's going to simply execute this and print something right okay now if i return something i can use this variable uh, value of the resultant variable anywhere within the program which has much more advantage so hence return type okay now you understand right now if i uh, poly dot add 12.1 comma 3 now i can store this addition of these two numbers in my own variable okay now the problem here is i change the data type of written written data type there so i have to change it here also double now the error will go off. okay everyone understands now no <laughs> sorry okay, don't worry i am going to come back to this later okay now i am executing it will execute one by one okay first second third call two arguments next value is 15.1 12.1 plus c and i am printing this my where my where 15.1 same thing but i am showing the example how to use the return variable in my program going forward i can use this my where anywhere right if it is not returning anything i cannot use it <clears throat> okay now there are two concepts you are uh, combining that's why you are not able to understand i am combining three concepts actually so that's why there is a confusion first concept is overloading okay now everyone clear about overloading what overloading means yes i simply take a method and change it to signature and use it uh, in whichever way i want to use it so i can pass okay now let's create another overloaded method for this i can do this right quickly public uh, i don't want to okay i think you don't like read and type so let's me put void and let add okay always remember that method name should not change signature only changes okay now i'll add what uh, uh, integer a yes long E double C okay so this is a another example of overloading so simply sys out simply I what I will do is I'll do a plus B plus C simplest manner okay now what what I did just now I just overload the add function that's all clear any questions regarding overloading yes or no yes yes okay yes means clear no doubts huh? okay that concept is okay don't don't mix that concept with another one i am going to go to the next concept which is a written type now let me simply put a written type here okay since integer uh, integer is less than long long is less than double double is the greatest of all okay so i have to always resultant has to be double if i want to Keep a return type. Now simply I am putting a return type here. Okay. Now what is the error? Just quickly go. If I put a return type, you have to add a return statement. Okay. I did not go to that yet. So I am just showing. Okay. Now sysout is not needed actually. So since you are not sysout is only for our understanding purpose. Simply I have to return something. Okay. Now what I want to return, I can add then return or I can directly return two ways. 
now what is my primary purpose of this to add this right yeah so now i declare a double variable it's called sum which is pretty much a plus b plus c okay now i'll simply add a return statement at the very end that's it i'm returning this okay when i call this you will know the purpose of it so here i want to call that overloaded method okay tell me how do i call it first is it a static method no so i have to use the instance p dot okay which is the method that i just created can you point it out one two three number three number three yeah one int one long one double simple okay when i pass the parameter that's when it's going to differentiate that's what i told you so first you pass int one then long long i can put pretty much anything okay i told you in the beginning right the capacity minus sign also i can put and double double means it's a blah 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 dot blah 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 okay now okay now what it's gonna do it's gonna execute this when i execute this it's gonna call that right add the fourth the second function and it's actually summing them up and returning this so when i execute this you are not going to see any output in the console because i am not printing anything right because it is returning i am not printing now you can utilize it so now i will use the returned value double and utilize this okay now you understand what i'm doing this add is returning a double value which is the sum of this 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 and simply i am assigning this sum to my own double value now if i want to print this i can print this i, I can add one okay now i i can do whatever i want to do so utilize this right let me make another variable i will utilize this and i'll call it utilize that and this basically i want to utilize this plus yeah i can i'll add 10 so basically i modified i mean i'm programming using uh, this variable i'm programming for the simple programming is i'm just adding and i'm also printing this out okay so i can say original value equals what for adding 10 let's utilize this and i'll print another value and this is a modified value that is utilize that okay this is just to explain the purpose of this or return value so when i run it it's gonna print this both origin value and return value so origin value is this one addition of all these three values and modified values plus 10 192 plus 10 202 okay so now you understand the purpose of it return value i can reprogram it use it throughout my program so what is the disadvantage of it's not disadvantage it's up to you if you want to keep it as a void you have to sys out explicitly otherwise you wouldn't know what the output is i mean it's not necessary but just for the understanding purpose initially this is outs are just for understanding practice only don't worry so we don't have to use this unless you want to uh, show it in the console okay now that clear second uh, second concept First concept is overloading. Second concept is returning. Clear, right? Any questions? Uh, why should be written? Why? Why shouldn't we use void? Any questions? No, that's fine. Thanks. You're clear, right? Okay. Any doubts? You can ask me now. Yeah, I can ask you later. Um, not now. Thank you. No, no, no. Go ahead. I think you have some doubt. No, no, I just have to re uh, put this in my head first and then do some practice. Then. 
okay got you okay so you just go through this and i'll share this with you don't worry so all of you installed the eclipse right so if i'm gonna export it and send it to you, you should be importing and see this or you can create your own classes don't worry i can pretty much send this example in the notepad also okay third one is what is the third one i told you overloading is over returning is over third one is static okay so that's why you mix up all the things made you confused third one is static okay so these are all non-static public i did not put static here so this is pretty much a non-static function okay so, so there are advantages static variables you have advantage because you can use a class name to access static methods and variables and uh st accessing non-static way pretty much makes it uh, uh less oc memory occupying so that's another advantage in the uh hard code programming by developers oh, and uh, you have to there are some rules only uh static variables can only be used in static methods only non-static variables cannot be used all those rules will state okay so this is static okay and return type is there too okay and you might ask, can I access a static in a non-static way? Yes, you can access a static method in a non-static way, but you cannot access a non-static method in a static way. Okay, don't don't get confused. So this add is a static method, right? Right. Now I already access that in a non-static way, like using a instance poly p is equal to new, new poly right so this is the method p dot add now that is possible static method i access in non-static way right and i can also access static method in a static way that's always there but a non-static method cannot be accessed in a static way that means that this is a non-static method okay this add int long double right now I cannot access this method using class name. Okay, do not get confused because I'm mixing overloading and static. So I'll simply create another function because it's the same name. You might get confused. Okay, so should I take another class or same? Okay, same class is fine, right? I don't want to take another exam, another class, create another class for static, not static. Okay, so public void this is a non-static method now oh, let me call it my non-static method right okay. since it's a different example i'm not combining this with the overloading so which might make you confused so simply i'll this out the name name of the function itself so that you will understand what i'm accessing non-static and how many ways i can access okay this is a non-static method i create one more method called static method and let's see how many ways we can access this white and this is my static method okay so two functions static and non-static okay now let's come to poly test here okay now after all this this is out i'll simply put a separator so that you don't get confused okay now i have created instance poly p right now i have two functions static function and non-static function okay i told you uh, static function i can access in a static way or non-static way a non-static function i can only access in a uh, sorry uh, non-static function i can only access in a non-static way not static way okay even i am getting confused with this okay so let's see static function accessed in static way example okay now I have a static function called my static function, right? Now I want to access that function in static way. So what is the static way? Using the class name. Poly is a class name in which that function present is uh, uh, present. 
so poly dot right my static method okay so the, you see the my non static method is not even available because it's not static it's not static okay so static function my static method accessed in a static way using the class name simple clear any doubts you can tell me right now okay now i will take same thing yeah static method accessed in a non static way let's see okay what is non static way using the instance so i already create the instance here right instantiation done so my poly class instance object is p so using p i can also access simple it will still be no problem i mean no error you can see now another example is non static function so non static function access in a non static way which is possible so p dot as soon as i put my non static method see here okay so this my non static method is a non static method access in a non static way using the instance object so that is now let's take a negative example what is it non static method or function cannot be accessed in a way okay that means it, it has throw error okay how do you try to access uh, this anyone what is my non static function and what is the way of static way so static way is always using the class right what is the class name poly right the poly dot now i want to access my non static method which is not even there but let's see what happens okay i will type it manually and see what error it will throw so basically this example is to show you you cannot access not not that you can access okay now if you hover over it it says cannot make a static reference to a non static method blah blah that's it so you cannot even use this is a negative example i comment it you know to avoid there so it's on it okay so read the last portion uh, my static method is accessed in static way non static way It didn't change any value right the output is same irrespective of whether you access a static variable a uh, static method in a static way or non static way uh, and non static method is accessed in a non static way so and the fourth example is not correct so that is commented okay so static class means what is it so these examples uh, will make you understand which we are going to utilize in the automation so that's why i'm emphasizing on this so in java a class can be made static but it should be within another class we cannot make outer classes static so a, if you are dealing with classes within classes sub classes this is going to be useful so let's not go into that because you don't have to use in the classes in the okay so so far what we have learned by, by looking at the ja uh, this can anybody anybody explain the oops concept quickly i mean whatever we have learned today is oops concept overall oops concept uh, we learn um polymorphism inheritance yes classes and options right and abstraction is not going to be much useful because if you are going to use abstract classes it's going to be useful but not much we are going to but i'll just simply explain here abstract
or will it take an exam? Okay, so instead of two different classes in library and test, I will simply take one. Okay, so this, let's call it executable reference class because I am going to use as executable class also. So I have to include public static void main in this one. OK, so here. OK, so here I'm just going to place some point and place folder so I don't really uh, create a big example but just for understanding purpose. okay so let's say outside this public static let me create a public employee type say get reference method which takes salary as an argument And I'll put some if condition. If salary is greater than seven thousand, then new employee. Okay, so in public static void main, I'll simply create an instance of execute reference. So let's let's think about these two different classes. Okay, I'll just uh, quickly exam. I take an example. I'm putting both uh, public static void main and uh, class in the same class. So new execute reference instantiated and using this exact ref i will try to access get ref okay so imagine this is in separate class okay i'm just not putting uh, creating a full example get ref and i'll pass thousand salary now I can assign this to variable of type employee. Let's call it EMP. And based on this, uh, it's going to return based on the salary check, it's 4000. So it's less than uh, 7000. So it's going to go here and return employee to. So I'm going to calculate his salary and calc. So this is going to be another function. So here employee, the employee class has get trip and calculus calc salary. So I did not uh, define it. So that's why you can see errors. So don't worry about the uh, intricacies of this. So employee has two classes, employee one and employee two. Employee one has calc salary and employee two has calc salary. So in employee one, I am defining calc salary as salary plus bonus, let's say 17K, 17,000 rupees or dollars, whatever, or let's say uh, 2K. And uh, in the employee two, I have redefined the same function calc salary little bit differently. Okay, 
so the bonus is let 5k double okay so that is the difference so which one based on the condition salary uh, if it's greater than 7000 7, i am going to call employee one scale salary if it is less than 7000 like this 4000 is going to calculate employee two's calc salary so the conditionally i'm calling two different classes methods based on the input i provide so don't worry about the intricacies so we are not going to use this concept much in the uh, this thing uh, automation and interfaces uh, is a uh, simple uh, while create uh, not going to do uh, use much except for the fact that the web driver itself is an interface like i told you web driver is interface and chrome driver which basically implements it an interface is just uh, uh, think about it as a, a building without any rooms so building is just built and an office is rented and it basically puts chairs tables desks and everything so that means they are implementing that interface so just think about that so web driver has all the uh, related variables and methods like get click select blah 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 but it is just left declared undefined so when chrome driver takes it it implements that interface and defines it in the sense that click will do what it basically clicks on the object in the chrome browser that the application display in the chrome browser gets get the url launch the browser everything so from browser to browser the definition changes just like i explained you before so that if you're uh, in uh, like if you say web driver driver is called new chrome driver the driver object is specifically is going to work for chrome driver only chrome browser only so if you say uh, driver web driver driver is called new firefox driver that driver is going to only work with the art it's going to only automate or execute programs run the automated test cases in that particular browser so that's that's all we need to know about the interface for now.